So I'm not sure where everybody is, but uh, hopefully your winner is uh, you're staying healthy and safe out there. Um, Irigo is very, very happy to be working with uh, PMA. And the purpose of this next hour that we're going to spend together talking about the partnership uh, and, and hearing care, most importantly, is that there's a lot of disruptive technologies. There's lots of options out there in the hearing care space. Um, and, and this is something that I'm quite familiar with. I have been an audiologist for 30 years. Um, hate to date myself, but that's where I am in life these days. Um, 30 years, I've practiced clinical audiology for some of that time. And for the last uh, 20 years or so, I've actually been more on the customer experience, marketing, sales side of the industry, understanding how to help more people improve their hearing care. And I've specifically been working with Ergo now for the last um, over four years now. And what really drew me to Ergo was the fact that they had built a hearing device and were creating a customer experience that was unlike anything um, in the hearing aid industry. And while that may sound cliche, the truth of the matter is that we were doing something to help more people hear better by increasing accessibility to hearing care, lowering the cost, creating really innovative technology to um, lower the stigma and increase the, uh, the acceptance of hearing care. And so all of those things combined with my background really was a good fit for me. And, um, and I've loved every minute of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some slides up here and um, we're going to go through some things. And um, I don't want this to be, you know, so much just a talking head presentation, um, you know, for 45 minutes. So when you have questions, please feel free to use, again, the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, if, uh, if I don't catch it, uh, Chad promised me he's going to be on the lookout for him and he will notify me and he can read the questions or I can go find it. But we'll get to it. This can be very informal. So feel free to ask away and I'll do my best to answer uh, whatever you have. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. And we're going to start this uh, from the beginning. All right. So I thought um, the title... I love my hearing aids. Yes, you heard that right. Um, I, as long as I've been in this industry, you don't hear that as often as we would like as hearing professionals. But working at Ergo, I have to say this is something I hear daily um, as I comb through testimonials and social media, um, talk to our sales team. It's amazing how many people actually say that. So I felt it was an appropriate title and one you don't hear too often. So you may be asking, who is Ergo? And uh, let's talk about what, what gets us going and why we exist. Um, as you heard me say, we are a very um, innovative and disruptive hearing aid company. Um, what we do is we work directly with consumers. We have a large team of hearing professionals on staff, but how we've built our business thus far is that we have taken the brick and mortar um, office out of the picture. And what that does is increases accessibility, lowers cost, and just gives people a new way uh, to reach hearing care. And um, so some of the things that we've learned by working with our focus groups and just being in business now for several years is that we know that people want to reduce the stigma of using hearing aids. So they're looking for invisibility. And I'm going to show you some device, um, Ergo devices, but as you can see from the pictures on here, they're incredibly small. When they are in place in the ear canal, they actually do vanish. They fit flush to the opening of the ear canal. So they are very difficult uh, to be seen unless you're really up close. Um, and, and another thing that we run into a lot of times is comfort. People not only want comfort in the physical aspect of wearing hearing aids, they want comfort in the way hearing aids sound, but they also, um, want comfort in the fact that psychologically they may not want their hearing aids to be seen. And we actually run into that more so um, than, than we want to admit as a profession. So we're trying to satisfy all these different levels of comfort, psychological comfort, sound comfort, and of course the wearing comfort. And then convenience. Uh, people want rechargeability. Um, you know, if, if you any of you are familiar with hearing aids that are on this call, know that forever um, you've needed to change batteries. And in some tiny devices like ours, batteries have to be changed every two to three days. Well, with Ergo, 
that pod that you see, and, and hopefully you can see my, um, you can't really see my cursor, but in the upper right hand corner, that round pod is the charging system. And, um, and you can charge the hearing aids overnight in that charging system and get a full 16 hours of use. We, we are the world's only completely in the canal rechargeable hearing aid. There is no other device like that from that perspective. Um, modern convenience, again, especially in the age of COVID right now, what we're seeing is that people want new options. Not everybody's comfort, comfortable going into an office these days and meeting face-to-face -face with hearing professionals or ear, nose, and throat doctors. So we offer a telecare uh, convenience, direct-to-consumer shipping. Um, we do remote programming of our devices in a, in a very convenient manner as well. Uh, so that's, that's huge for us on a number of levels. Um, and we know people want easy. If, we have people that order Ergo devices and we hear from them once and never hear from them again, and that's fine. But if you do need support, like I said at the beginning of, of this session, we do have a very large team of hearing professionals, which I'll touch on a little bit later, that can provide phone support, video support. They can go in and do remote programming and adjustments of your hearing aids if needed. Uh, and again, that goes along with the sound customization option, options that we offer. Um, with our team, but also you can do this yourself as well through an app um, on your mobile phone, which I'll also touch on briefly as we go forward. Background noise reduction is absolutely key. If you look at reasons why people um, are looking for hearing devices, it's because they want clarity in all situations, but predominantly they want to hear better when there is background noise, whether that's TV, hearing speech from a distance, you're outside with the wind blowing, um, or you may be hearing background noise at a restaurant, which is incredibly common. And bottom line, when you put all this together is, you know, again, my 30 years in this industry is people just want something that works and um, the easier that you can make it, the better. So that's what we're all about. That's what gets us up in the morning and keeps our sales, marketing, research and development team and customer support teams all driving uh, forward every day. So hey, what's... Steve. Yes, please. I'm sorry to interject. Um, I just wondered, um, I had thought it was a, a panelist view issue. Um, yes. What we are seeing is um, the PowerPoint like presenter view. Oh, you are, um, okay. Yeah, so I just wondered um, if you wouldn't mind fiddling with your share settings um, just to make the screen a little bigger for everyone. Sorry, everyone. Actually, no, 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 I'm glad you uh, pointed that out to me. Um, Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to actually, because I have a larger monitor in front of me. Does that fix the problem there? Yes, it sure does. Although I seem to have lost your... There you go. There you are. Okay, okay so perfect. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank now? you. Thanks, sorry about that everybody. We'll, we'll move forward here. I'm not sure why that happened, but now we're good. So when we look at hearing loss in the United States, there are roughly 48 million adults with hearing loss, but only about 25% own a hearing aid. And that, that may seem odd to, to a lot of you. It's, it's, that number has never changed. When I got out of school 30 years ago, that's how many people owned a hearing aid in the United States that could own one was, was about, 25%. So it's been challenging uh, for us to grow the market. Um, hence, that's why Yergo exists, uh, so that we can try to uh, move the needle there and help more people. Um, okay. All right, so hearing loss is the third most common medical condition in the US after hypertension and diabetes. Um, there is a massive cost associated with unaddressed hearing loss of, um, you know, using US dollars globally of $750 billion. So the big questions are key reasons why aren't adults using hearing aids more often um, than they should. And again, we go back to high stigma. Um, there is stigma associated to using hearing devices. And it's that stigma of, you know, how it feels, um, you know, to have a sense, one of your five senses uh, lose its ability. Uh, there could be other things around that psychologically, but on average, it takes somebody about seven years. This is a very striking statistic, but it takes somebody an average of about seven years from when they first recognize that they have a hearing loss 
until they choose to do something about it. Um, and again, that again sits, sits back in that stigma category. High cost. The average cost of a pair of hearing aids, according to a number of resources out there, is about $4,600 for a pair. Um, Ergo is considerably less than that, which we'll look at as we go um, forward here. And then you also have the inconvenience. We hear that from all of our focus groups and from other literature in our industry that, you know, repeated trips to offices. And we, we've pretty much given people one option to buy hearing aids. And that is you have to go to a doctor of audiology, a, a hearing instrument specialist in a retail environment, or you have to go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor. There aren't a whole lot of options out there outside of that for FDA, you know, exempt uh, medical devices like what Ergo sells and what you can get elsewhere. So again, we're trying to change that. So um, as you, you should be able to see my cursor now moving on the screen here. So as you look at some of these different hearing aids, most customers don't even know the brand of their devices after they get them. So for starters here, I wanna show you um, a few different styles of hearing aids. Some of these you may have seen before. Um, if we look in the upper right hand corner, um, what you see here is a behind the ear device. This is the most popular style sold in traditional um, clinics. So the device sits above the ear, there's a small thin tube putting the speaker and the sound into the ear this way. Um, again, about 90% of all hearing aids sold around the world are of this style. If you wanted something custom that fits in the ear canal, you do have this style. This makes up a smaller percentage of sales through traditional uh, clinics, um, but these sizes are, you know, from a stigma standpoint, you, you don't see them nearly as much. The problem that you run into with something that's hard acrylic material like what you see down here is that it tends to plug up the entire ear and give you a stuffy, uncomfortable feeling uh, when you talk and, and inside the ear. And um, so what, what Ergo is trying to do is find something that's as small as this, if not smaller, but yet through, through our design, open the ear canal up so you don't get that plugged up feeling. Another style that you will see from time to time, even um, less popular, is something custom made that fills up the whole part of the ear right here. And, um, and this tends to be for people that have dexterity issues. They might need something a little bit larger for power and excessive um, other controls and so forth. So you will see this. So these are the three, your three most common styles that you will see in the traditional sector. Now in the bottom right hand, or bottom right hand corner, you might be wondering why I put an ear with nothing in it. Well, there's actually a hearing aid inside this person's ear and that's, there is an Ergo device in there. Um, and this is what I was talking about when you're trying to find a device that is virtually invisible, super comfortable to wear. This is a gentleman um, that I was working with a couple of years ago that I took with my, my cell phone um, when I fit him in our office here in Nashville. And um, that's how it looks. This is not at all an exception to how Ergo looks in the ear, but this is actually quite common um, that we see this kind of result with the fitting of our hearing aids. And then I'm gonna go into a little bit more of, of why it fits the way it does here shortly. Okay, so when we also look at some of the challenges that we run into um, when looking at hearing aids today, there are a few main ones. Some of the biggest ones are that when we do a search on the internet for hearing aids or for any product, we're always looking for the best information and we're looking for hearing aid reviews and so on and so forth. And what we find is that there's very little information about what are the best hearing aids or hearing aid reviews. And the reason for that is just that it's hard to quantify if you're looking for a computer, a cell phone, a washer and dryer, a television set, you can actually get into specifications and very tangible things to compare. However, with hearing aids, everything is very, everything is very perceptual. So what may fit well and be comfortable for me might be completely um, opposite for Chad, for example, or some of you in the phone call. And what might sound good to me if you have the same hearing loss as me, might sound completely different to somebody else. So it is somewhat challenging to put that kind of information together, but at the same time, it does become very frustrating and confusing to most consumers when they start looking at hearing devices. 
And there's also, there's just so many different buying options. There's so much confusion and clutter in the space, especially when we know that about 75% of people start their search for hearing care on the internet. There's just a number of options out there and the space is getting cluttered. Um, and we do recognize that, but it's not just hearing aids where we're seeing a lot of that clutter and confusion. It's a lot of other consumer commodities and consumer electronics. And, and there's not a whole lot of differentiation between the major brands. There's arguably five, you could throw Ergo in there as the six biggest brands of hearing aids in the world right now, um, especially in the United States. And if you take Ergo out of the mix because of how we do business and what our hearing aids look like, when you look at the other five large manufacturers, there's very little differentiation in how they look and how they work and how they're sold. So, so that also, again, kind of creates some confusion. All right, so moving on. All right, I wanna just touch briefly on actually what is hearing loss because what, we, what I've always learned in this field is that when we talk about hearing loss, there's two things that we have to clearly di cl clearly differentiate. And it's, it's really understanding the difference between hearing, which is detecting sound, and then understanding it, which is what happens when that sound that we've detected, whether it's speech or environmental sounds, actually goes up to our brain, whereas, which is where we make sense and put labels on things, okay? So hearing loss, the way Ergo looks at this, and the way I've always looked at it is, hearing loss is not a sickness or a medical condition, okay? It does have codes and things for insurance purposes, but what I like to tell people is, is hearing loss occurs from simply living a life well-lived. I mean, going to, you know, living in Nashville, Tennessee, you know, going to see live music pre-COVID and what'll be coming up in the near future. This is something we do as, as just a regular thing. And so exposing ourselves to loud music, or if you have a hobby using firearms, um, or we just get older, mother nature is gonna affect all of us as we get a little bit older. And uh, there's nothing we can do about that. So if you lived a life well lived, there's no reason to let hearing loss slow you down. And that's how we have to look at it is, let us, let us help you get back and, and enjoy that quality of life that you need to. All right, so let's bounce back into the difference between hearing, which is detecting sound and then understanding speech, because most of the time what we work with um, at Ergo is people will call in and express a significant problem understanding what people are saying. So some of the, some of the symptoms that we hear about that are most common are people will say, my spouse is mumbling to me. They're just not clear. If they would talk more clearly, I would hear better. Um, you know, some people will say, you know, I heard my wife's voice or I heard my friend's voice, a coworker's voice, but I just can't understand what they said. And again, that we come back to understanding. We typically will hear from people that they can hear a man's voice much more clearly than they can a woman in, a women and children's voices because they're higher in pitch. And again, it comes back to understanding. Um, and then again, we talked earlier about, you know, being in a background noise in background noise, such as restaurants, that background noise tends to act as a blanket if you want to look at it that way. So if you have hearing loss and you're already having trouble understanding certain sounds, that background noise will tend to cover those up quite a bit. And then probably the, the biggest one are the TV battles with the remote control and adjusting the volume constantly up and down. Um, we hear this all the time from husband and wives and, and or if they have children at home that there's this constant battle with the remote control to turn the volume up for the person that has hearing loss, which tends to drive people to different rooms of the house, which we don't wanna do. If you have a program or a sports event that you wanna watch together, we want you to watch it together as opposed to in different parts of the house. So, you know, those are things that we want to try to bring back. All right, so moving on. If you, when you look at whether or not you need hearing aids, a lot of people get a hearing screening or a hearing test to begin to understand that. And there's a number of ways that you can get hearing tests today. You can go the traditional route by seeing an ear, nose and throat doctor, an audiologist, going to a retail center. In, a, in newer cases today, online hearing screenings are becoming much more reliable. Um, we have one on the ergo.com website that we feel very, very good about. 
and that we can also um, go over the results with you um, in a telecare appointment, which I'll talk about later. But essentially what you're seeing on this screen here is the X's and O's, the X stands for the left ear and the circle stands for the right ear. And along the top of the graph here, these are the different tones. If anybody's had a hearing test, which most people have by this time in our lives, um, you had them in grade school and you may have had them in other ways, is that you're, you're being presented a series of tones. So along the top part of the graph here, tones down in this range would be bass tones, our low frequency tones, but think of it as, as instruments like an oboe, a bass guitar, a tuba, a drum, uh, something like that. That's how I, I tend to relate things musically. As we move to the right across to these other tones where you'll see 1000, 2000, 4000, and 8000 hertz, these are what we call higher frequencies or more treble or higher pitch tones. So this is where you're going, if we keep the musical instrument analogy alive, this is where you're going to hear flutes, uh, piccolos, you will hear um, the right hand key on a piano, guitars playing in the upper register. Those tend to be out in this range here, okay? Um, so whenever we do a hearing test, we're presenting these different tones and then we're adjusting on the left side of the scale here, different volume levels. And we're trying to find the softest level that you can hear these different tones. And once we find out the softest level that you can hear each of these tones, then we map it on this chart. And to give you a reference point, if we were to draw a line right here where you see my cursor from 25 decibels and we go straight across, anything between negative 10, zero to 25 would be considered normal hearing. So if the individual who took this test result, if we put another individual up here and all of their right and left ear scores were up in this range, we would be able to report that they had normal hearing or hearing within the normal range. In this individual's case, they have their low pitch or bass hearing, okay, is within the normal range. But now once we get into these higher pitch tones, they're hearing, you see, the, you see this sharp drop off, okay? And it's this sharp drop off that doesn't mean that you're deaf in this range. It simply means that you've lost sensitivity to hearing those higher pitch sounds, okay? So that means that when you're in a, in a sound booth, which is typically when where most hearing tests are done or in a hearing screening, it's compensated for with, with insert earphones, is that once we know this, the next chart I'm going to put up here will explain now, hopefully, what happens when you have this kind of hearing loss. So if we look, this is called the speech banana. This is the kind of a funny term for something that's in audiology circles is used to explain clarity and understanding. So all of the different consonants in this range of human speech is mapped out in this yellow area right here. And what you'll see is that in this higher pitched area out here between 1000 and 2000 Hertz, in this higher pitched area is where consonant sounds are predominantly located. And you can see some of these sounds right here. And I've got it, the next screen I'm gonna show you will make more sense of this. So what happens when you have, this is the most, by the way, this is the most common type of hearing loss that we'll see in adults. Roughly 80% of adults experience, this is what we call high frequency hearing loss. You, you've, some of you that's been in the hearing aid space that may be researching this or worn hearing aids before, you may have been told that you have some form of high frequency hearing loss. And that means that your hearing for bass sounds is somewhat normal but more impacted in the high frequencies. So this means that you'll hear sound, you can hear people talking, but what will be the issue is the understanding because these consonant sounds are not coming through and making sense of the words. Okay, so hopefully I haven't given that too much detail and information, but this will now make sense of it. All right, so let's look at this sentence right here. Okay, this is gonna talk about the importance of con consonants. You see this sentence that says, watch out for the, and the, and the middle vowel sound, okay, is, is an or, okay? So we're missing the consonants at the beginning and end of that. So what, what could it be? Watch out for the floor, 
watch out for the door, watch out for the board. I mean, you could, if you're a, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, watch out for the sword, okay? You never know, all right? So that's the importance of constant. So what will happen with this type of sentence is if somebody if he was having a conversation in a restaurant and a friend of theirs said, hey, watch out for the, the they're not gonna pick up the beginning consonant and the ending consonant of that particular word. And what they'll do then is they're, what, what are they gonna do? They're gonna say, what'd you say? They're gonna go, huh, what? They're gonna need to hear it again to try to clarify what they missed. Okay, so, so that, that's what's happening with high frequency hearing loss. Here's another example. Can you tell me what, and what you have here for those of you that are on the phone, can you tell me what the, the middle vowel sound is I, and then it ends with IS. So if I put the options, can you tell me what wine this is? That might be an option, okay? Can you tell me what time it is? Can you tell me what sign it is? Okay, so you know we can, we can make up what we would guess this to be, but again, what are we going to do? We're going to probably ask somebody to repeat themselves or say, huh, or what. This last example is something that I love sharing because this happened to me when I was, this goes back about 20 years ago, when I was actually still practicing at an ear, nose, and throat doctor's office, and I was working with somebody. And this particular instance is what actually was the tipping point to make this gentleman order hearing aids. And he was a, a VP of sales at a company that, that sold some type of product. I can't remember, it's been too long ago. But I remember what happened to him is he, he was on a conference call and it was a large account that they had been working on for several months. And on speakerphone, they finally got this particular client to place their order of their product. And what the VP of sales, the gentleman I was working with, what he thought he heard was, I'd like to order 30 boxes of your product. And as he told the story, he said, I reacted and went, wow, that's great. That's more than I was expecting. I can't wait to, to build the relationship. And then he turned and said, hey, so-and-so, did you get that? 30 boxes. And then the person on the speaker phone actually said, no, I said 13 boxes of the product and then accused the VP of sales for trying to upsell him and to play games and things like that. It turned out to be a huge embarrassment for him and his coworkers that were on the call. And that was the tipping point where he said, I have to do something now about my hearing. So that again, reinforces the importance of those consonants. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to go any further because I think we've driven the point home with that. But again, if, if you start to see that your ability to understand speech is affecting your work life, your relationship with spouses, family, friends, your just enjoyment of simple things like going outside and hearing the birds and hearing nature, then you owe it to yourself not to let hearing loss slow you down and do something about it. Okay, oh, let me go back to this. So this, this last little paragraph here on the right with some bullet points. So we do know through research that if you don't do anything about hearing loss and you continue going about straining, um, asking people to repeat, that we do know that you will experience greater fatigue, frustration. Hearing loss is very, very common in isolating people from one another. They will stop going out to restaurants. They'll stop going out to eat. And, it, and as long as I've been doing this, I can't tell you how many times that hearing aids have, to, have been described to me after I have fit somebody with hearing aids or they've purchased ear goes, they will come back and say, that, that actually saved my marriage. And I don't mean that to be an over-exaggeration or hyperbole, is that some, when you break down communication amongst ourselves as human beings, um, is that it affects things a number of different ways and relationships on a personal level at home and at work can be huge as part of that. All right, so now let's get into some of the fun stuff here. So I talked earlier about hearing aids and a lot of the clutter and the different options that are available out here. So in, in the hearing aid world, there are essentially two big buckets that we look at today. Um, 
the first one is something that on this chart, so I, I did a quick, I, I did a presentation uh, similar to this one time for a group down in Tucson. And so I just did a quick search and took this screenshot of, um, I put in, I searched for Tucson hearing aids and Ergo came up and then a lot of these other devices that you can see are less expensive, okay? So we're gonna get into the price, but you can see the price for a pair of Ergo hearing aids with the charger being $2,950 retail. A lot of these other devices that you'll see around $400, these fall into this category up here, which is called, they're called PSAPs. PSAP is an FDA term that stands for personal sound amplification product. So PSAPs are, they look like hearing aids, but they are technically not hearing aids because they're not, the FDA defines them as not intended to address hearing loss and they cannot be marketed as hearing aids per the FDA. That being said, you will see that they position themselves as hearing aids because the, our, our, our federal agencies, our federal government does not do the job that we would like them to do as far as policing the space, okay? So you can usually though tell these by the way they look and also by the price point. So these would be devices where, um, you know, they will show up at your front door. They're, they, they are just going to amplify every single sound that you hear in equal amount, okay? So while they might work to some degree when you're watching television, the moment you get outside of that into a more strenuous environment, they're not going to have noise reduction, feedback control, and a lot of other more sophisticated digital processing technology uh, to help you in those more difficult environments where most of us live and interact in so many different um, uh, situations. So the second big bucket, which is again, where the vast majority, close to 90% of, of, of all devices are sold, are classified as hearing aids. And these are um, FDA class one, class two exempt medical devices. And the key differentiator here is that hearing aids are intended to compensate for impaired hearing per the FDA definition. And when you look at these, Ergo is a hearing aid. So we fall under this categorization. By choosing to be in this categoriz categorization, Ergo, like all of the other big brands that you will see out there, we have to follow very, very stringent R&D quality control, marketing guidelines. There's so many different things that we have to follow as far as putting serial numbers on our hearing aids and, tra and for tracking. There's just, I would bore us all to death if I went through the details, but it creates a level of compliance and quality that is far superior and far different than a lot of these other PSAP devices that you see out to the right here, okay? So as you may do your research and look at options, those of you that are in the market and looking for hearing aids, this is these are different things that you'll see that you'll go, well, why can I get a pair of hearing aids for $400, but Ergo costs, let's say 2,500, or the devices that my ENT recommended to me are $5,000. That, that huge price disparity is there for a reason. All right, <clears throat> and then quickly here, the normal, when we look at how Ergo is trying to increase accessibility and try to improve convenience with hearing aids, the traditional path when you look at it is visiting your primary care doctor, your EMT to get a referral, or going straight to an audiologist um, going into an office for a hearing test, making multiple trips back and forth to pick the hearing device up, to be fit, to have those adjustments done, and so on and so forth. And, and there's nothing wrong with that model. It's just not for everybody. And it's time that we change that up a little bit, or more than a little bit, as I should, maybe I should say. So what Ergo has done is that we have wanted to empower the consumer so that you can do a lot of this research on your own through our website, again, through taking our online hearing check, um, through submitting requests uh, to have some of our trained um, sales consultants or some of our audiologists interact with you so that we can undiscover if Ergo is right for you and let you make the decision and order devices online, over the phone, through our telecare team. And you can usually receive them in as little as three days. You don't have to leave your home. 
you don't have to make multiple trips back and forth to a hearing professional because our licensed hearing professionals can come to you through the phone or through video and make these adjustments to your hearing devices, or you can do it yourself through our app, which I'm about to run into um, for discussion here. Um, so again, you know, it's, it's simple, uh, it, it's much easier, it's convenient, it's empowering. It's a very personalized approach, especially the way that we screen clients over the phone and through our telecare team. The, the experience that you get as a consumer with us is very detailed, even more so than you might experience when you're face-to-face -face with somebody in a clinic, okay? All right, so moving along here, we'll talk briefly a little bit. I'm gonna do a little show and tell. I'm gonna to try to do the best I can here over video. Um, so this is what an ear hearing aid looks like up close. So it's a very sophisticated multi-channel. What that means is there's different frequency bands that can be adjusted in processing sounds inside the hearing aid. Um, this is the part that's inside the ear. This is a very odd looking tip. These are called flexies, but these tips are made from very, very soft surgical grade silicone. Uh, when you put them in the ear, they will conform to the shape of your ear canal and provide an incredibly soft, comfortable fit. Now, the one thing that they do not do, like the traditional hearing aids we looked at, is that they leave the ear canal open. And what I mean by saying the word open is that if you've ever taken your hands, and let's say you've pushed or tried to close off your ear, if you can see me on the screen, you will hear your voice echoing and resonating in your head. And that's called the occlusion occluded effect. And um, that's not comfortable. That is not something that you would wanna walk around doing. So Ergo, by designing these soft flexi, flexi tips right here, what that does is anchors the hearing aid very comfortably in place, but because they're soft, silicone, it, some of those sounds, if you remember on that hearing test, part of those sounds that that person heard were in a normal range, it allows those sounds to pass through to the ear normally. And then it's only going to amplify the high pitch sounds that you need to hear for the clarity and understanding. This provides a much more tra transparent and clear and normal sounding um, reproduction. Um, whereas a lot of hearing aids can sound tinny, they can sound um, artificial. They're never going to sound like a set of Bose headphones, for example, but you're going to get a much more natural sound reproduction if we don't close off the ear canal, which we've tried to do. Um, this piece right here, this always, add, I get questions about this. What is this removal thread? Because of the way Ergo fits in the ear canal is that you need to be able to pull it out of the ear. So when this fits flush into the ear, this little removal handle sits and the very, if you can see on my ear, it sits in the very, very bottom nook right here, clear and hidden and blends in with your skin. And you would simply pinch the little ball right here on the end to remove it from your ear. Uh, and that's how it works. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got a set of our devices, okay? So this is the charger that you can see here. I'm gonna pull the lid off and you can see the lights. So these are the charging lights that are telling me that both hearing aids are charged. This light down here at the bottom, this is telling me that the charging pod itself is charged. So if some of you are familiar with Apple's AirPods, you know that the case for, an, for the AirPods is chargeable. You can charge that up and it will work for a certain period of time. Ah, and Chad's got his, he's got them up on the screen there. Um, so for ours is you can charge the case and the case will run for about six or seven days and then you take the lid off, and I'll try to get this up as close as I can to the screen here. You'll see the little removal handles sticking up, and I'm going to pull one of the Ergo devices out so you can see how small it is. Okay. And that's, that's an Ergo device. So that is the Neo Hi-Fi. Now, I'm going to put this in my ear. Okay. And... I'm going to try to turn my head as much as I can down to the screen here. I'm a little limited, but right here is the removal handle, how I would, how I would take it out. Okay. So again, the soft tips, I'll take this one out here and show you the soft tips. I'll actually remove it from the hearing aid itself. You can see that I can completely squish these and make them flat. 
that's how soft the tips are. So they, again, they, they conform to the shape of the ear canal. I have very small ear canal openings um, for being a male. And these, when, I, when I first interviewed with Ergo, these were the only hearing aids that I have ever been able to wear that fit down in my ear canal because of the way that we've designed these. So, um, so, so that's the, the show and tell part there. So the carrying case is super convenient. You do not have to be tethered um, you know, to a charging cable except to charge the case about once a week. And um, inside the case, and this is actually a very cool function here that I haven't talked about, but inside the case, when we talk about the app and the remote programming, there's a Bluetooth receiver built in down here that when you use our app, I'm gonna hold my phone up, when the app connects to the charger so that if you wanted to make adjustments on the app on your phone, you communicate through the charger. And then when you plug the hearing aids back in, any changes that you've made to the hearing aid, you'll see, you see the light scrolling right here, it would upload those personalization of the changes. So it's, it's super, it, it's convenient, it's very high tech, but unbelievably easy to use. So that, that's what we love about it. Hey, Steve, um, yes. we, have a, we had a question just on the design. Um, yes. I wondered if you talk about it. Um, I, this is something I struggle with myself, um, is having like struggling with like an earwax overproduction or um, how that can become like impacted or collect in the, you know, at the bottom of the canal. How, um, how does the Ergo device um, help? Like, or, or, you know, would you have to be sure that your ears were like perfectly clean? Sure. Um, that kind of thing? That's a great question. I'm glad whoever asked that, and I'm glad you did. Um, earwax is never a pleasant topic to talk about, but we have to talk about it because in the world of hearing aids, it is the number one um, thing that we have that we talk about that actually will cause repair issues, okay? So what Ergo has done is that these flexies not only serve the purpose of a comfortable fitting and conforming to the shape of the ear canal, but if you remember, if I go back and look at this, you see that the way these flexi tips are staggered in the ear and the way that they're kind of angled back is when you pull that out of the ear, if there's any earwax in the opening of the ear canal, it removes it at night, okay, when you take them out. So not to get too gross on everybody here, but if, if I show you and bring this up close, there's actually a little bit from this being in my ear on the tip. And what I would do to clean that would be to take, just to take this off, let it dry overnight so it be, so the earwax becomes hard and then rinse it with some warm water in the morning or wipe it off with a towel, okay? And, and then you can put it back on the hearing aid. Now on the tip of the hearing aid, now this you can't see, but underneath there's a tiny little blue bucket on the tip of this right there. That is also a wax catcher. So you've got two ways that we manage wax. You've got the flexies on the end and then the bucket that's on here and there's tools that come with the hearing aid that allow you to change that bucket. Okay, so we manage wax and prevent it from getting down in the hearing aid that way. But you also, if you have overly waxy ears, it's a good idea to buy, you can buy over-the-counter earwax removal kits that can flush and clean the ear out. The number one thing I will tell everybody on this um, call is whatever you do, do not use Q-tips, please. They, they are the worst things you can do for your ears and for earwax, it just pushes it down, okay? So just in, in the essence of time here, and then we'll take, I wanna make sure I have time for quest, more questions. So there are different ways that you can reach Ergo. We wanna meet you where you wanna be met, okay? So we have a contact center with incredibly highly skilled and highly trained um, team of people that um, are hearing professionals and people that can screen, screen you and answer questions to make sure that Ergo is, is right for you. If you have a hearing test from another uh, facility, you can fax that, you can scan it, you can take a picture with your cell phone and email it to us, however you wanna get it to us, but we can review that through our hearing professional team and, uh, and have a conversation about your hearing test. We also um, have, like I said, we have our hearing check on our website, which is a, a, an accurate screening that involves tone testing along with lifestyle questions. 
those results do come in when you take that, do come into our database, and then we're able to reach out and go over the results with you that way. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about um, is that for some people that want a more traditional experience, you can book a 30 to 45 minute appointment with one of our audiologist or hearing instrument specialist, and you'll actually have a Zoom meeting like we're doing right now, one-on-one -on -one with the professional. They would again go over the hearing test results with you. They'll do what I did just now and actually with a little bit better camera and view, and they can show you and demonstrate the Ergo device, but then just be there for that consultation that you would get if you went into a clinic. So, um, you know, when you call us, you can say, hey, I would like to book a telecare checkup and one of our uh, team members would set that up for you. They can send you the link or they can schedule it for you. Now, in addition, um, one of the things that you don't get when you do go to a traditional brick and mortar practice is support. You have to wait till they're open um, and, and work during and, and operate during their business hours. For Ergo, we provide 24 seven support through a very comprehensive library of videos. Everything that you need to know to insert, to use your charger, to finding the right fit with our different flexes selections, how to clean, uh, everything. We've got 11 different videos for each one of our products on our website that are incredibly clear. We have spent a good deal of money and time and effort to build these so that if two o'clock in the morning you have an urge to figure out the charger, go for it, jump on our website and, and have at it. And that should be very helpful. Um, the mobile app, I'm gonna do this very quickly here. Um, so I'm just gonna pop everything up. These are the different things that you can do. Went one too far. Different things with our mobile app is that you can actually go in and change the different listening programs. You can adjust the bass and treble. You can actually, um, we have people during our business hours if you want to have a video consultation with one of our professionals or client care, you can actually tap a button on your app and it'll instantly connect to one of our on-call uh, people. All right. So our app is actually becoming every few months we come out with a new version. It becomes more comprehensive, more robust, faster. And it's again, we've, we've designed this with consumers feeding back to us what's most helpful and easiest to use. Um, we have all sorts of people that use this app, all different age ranges, and, and do it very successfully. Okay, I'm going to, we get lots of accolades. I'm not going to pat ourselves on the back here too much, but we are doing things the right way. It does get recognized by tech companies, but most importantly, it gets recognized by consumers um, that use us. And we have several hundred reviews on our website. We do not filter out. Um, reviews. When they come in, they're posted. We've got plenty of video testimonials out there. So um, we're very proud of what we do. All right. So let's the last thing here, which is probably you're all wondering, okay, I like what I'm hearing here, right? So how do I use Ergo with my benefit? Okay. And so we've made it very easy, economical to use your hearing aid benefit with Ergo. Now, Chad uh, told me that he's going to um, take this information and make sure that he shares this with everybody um, that's on the call. But um, we have a toll-free number that you can call in. Uh, we have a, uh, a link to our website that goes right to the federal page. Um, and you simply mention when you're on there that you're with PMA. And um, we have a team dedicated to insurance and third-party referrals and even the federal program that are very well-versed in talking about this. Um, and again, you can meet one-on-one -on -one with your Ergo representative. You can schedule that telecare checkup and, re and then we'll review the solutions. And then we're going to verify the insurance information and make sure that you know, what you have, we can help and work out the best option for you. And then we file all the paperwork. So there's nothing that you have to do, okay? Except wait for the hearing aids to show up, begin using them and begin hearing better. So we try to make it as easy as possible for you. And to give you an example of what this benefit looks like compared to traditional hearing aids. So the average retail price of our premium device that I was just showing you is the Ergo Hi-Fi um, for the pair. So this is for two hearing aids because everything we sell is by pair is $2,950. 90% of um, federal members have a $2,500 allowance for their hearing aids. 
So what we would do in this case is we would discount the price so that you would have a $0 out of pocket cost if you wanted to work with Ergo and, and use the Hi-Fi. If you have a, a lesser uh, benefit than the $2,500, we have another model we could work out with you, but we encourage everybody to get the premium device. So even if your out-of-pocket cost is $500, that's still a far cry from what you would pay normally. Now let's look at the same, you know, through a traditional uh, brick and mortar office, uh, an ENT office, for example. You might get quoted a price of $4,600, whether or not they discount, I, most of them do not. If you applied your $2,500 uh, benefit, you would have an out-of-pocket cost of $2,100. So it's, it's, it's quite a big difference when, when you look at it um, from this chart. And there you go. How did I do? 12.52. Steve, thank you so much. Um, so I have some questions in the Q&A. Um, the first one I'm uh, going to take, there's, a, well, it came in second, but I think it's while we're here, um, there was a question about whether the, if the PMA discount is only available to the PMA member or to the, or, or also to their family. Um, and so, Steve, I'll let you, if you have a comment on that, it's my understanding that um, it's based upon the FEHB plan. Um, you know, so if that's like a self, self plus one or self and family. Correct. We, we actually, I mean, not only, of course, it's going to be for the member, but we do pass along um, the discount if, if their benefits actually allow it. Um, and that person is part of the plan, then of course we will, you know, do a spouse or whoever is part of it. Thank you. Um, and a question we had earlier about um, the hearing aid functionality was okay. um, just to be sure that when you're completing your, you know, your visit or your order, that the device that you receive, um, you get, you, you you receive two hearing aids, and then there was a question about, um, do you have to wear them at the same time, like for them for the, for the device to function? I guess maybe if somebody only had like one side. Well, there, yeah, there's a couple ways to look at that. So, you, so they do come as a pair. So everything that you receive with the order are a pair of hearing aids. We do not sell them individually because there's just not very many people that have one-sided um, hearing loss. Um, so we do sell them as a pair. It comes with the charger, all the cleaning kits, the different filters and flexies that you can change, um, the charging cable. Everything you need is actually in this tiny box right here. Okay, we, we pack it all in there. Um, there's a two year warranty that comes with it as well. Now, as far as wearing hearing aids, if you have hearing loss in both ears, it's absolutely best practices, no questions that you need to wear them both at the same time. However, if you do have hearing loss in just one ear, we actually have several people that purchase ear goes as a pair. And what they do is essentially double the life of their purchase oh, yeah. because the, the devices, even though they are marked right and left, they're interchangeable. So you could wear one in one ear and then put the other one in the next day. And that way you can kind of cycle back and forth and keep the longevity of the rechargeable batteries between the two. So it's, it's actually more economical to do that sometimes than it is to go out and buy just one device itself. So everybody's different though. And that's what our hearing professionals consult with you about. I hope that answered that person's question. Thank you, Steve. And then um, often in the FEHB plan, um, they'll, you know, they have this hearing aid benefit, but you know, you can only use it. You know, it's not like you can get a hearing aid every year, right? You have to, you have to maybe it's like every three years or every five years. Um, it, so for members who are like currently wearing a pair would your advice be to just wait until their benefit comes back again? Or is there like a workaround or anything like that? So, so what I would suggest, because, you know, the, the federal program through, especially through Blue Cross and Blue Shield went from, you know, hearing aids being uh, allowed to be purchased every three years to every five years. There is, there are some people for the first couple of years, I think this year and next, that are going to be grandfathered. Okay, if, if we can use that term. But what I would suggest is that I'm not the expert on the, you know, the, the plan details on how it works. We have a whole team 
that do this every single day and talk to hundreds of people is I would encourage them to call in and let us verify the benefit and see where they are in that cycle. Okay, that would be my, my recommendation. Thank you, Steve. Um, and then I'm gonna, it looks like um, that's all the questions that we have on here. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question sure. for myself. Um, I actually had two. Um, one was about um, if there's any sort of like warranty or like ongoing support um, and what that structure looks like. Okay, great, great question. Um, so as far as the support, let's talk about the support. When you purchase Ergo devices, um, you will get support from our company as far as, I mean, you're always gonna get support from our company no matter what, but what most people are looking for is support from the hearing professionals on our team. So we do not bill or charge additionally for support when you go out of the warranty. So if you own our hearing aids, a pair of our hi-fi hearing aids for three years, if you call us once in three years, fine. If you call us 20 times in three years, you're not gonna get charged. We don't put a limit on the number of contacts. So it is lifetime unlimited support. The warranty is two years. And I'll explain that because the warranty is, is, is very strong here. You have a two year repair warranty and, and it's unlimited repairs during that two years. So if you have really waxy ears, moisture problems, whatever it may be, if it gets too high, we will try to figure out to get to the bottom of it because nobody wants to be without hearing aids. But we do cover those for the two years. The first year that somebody owns our hearing aids, we provide what's called a one-time loss and damage uh, insurance or deductible. And what that insurance does is if um, somebody emailed in earlier today and unfortunately their dog, uh, they had left their ear goes sitting out on the coffee table and their dog ate them. I know that sounds really strange, but dogs love the smell of earwax. It, it's always been that way. But their dog ate their hearing aids um, and so we have to replace them, but we, we will do that during the first year one time for a small deductible and give you a brand new set. Now that loss and, duct, that loss and damage insurance will expire at that point because it is just a one time, but it does pre save you from going and spending another $2,500 when your benefit wouldn't pay for it. Okay. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you answered all of my questions and because I had a question about like if it needed repair, what, what we had to do. And we do repair, and, and this, this came up um, in another session that I had done recently, is if you do go out of the warranty, so let's say after year two, you're wearing our hearing aids and they needed to be repaired, we can repair that device. And we technically, we can't break into the hearing aid itself and fix something. So what we do is we actually replace the device, but there's a charge then at that point, and that charge is less than $300 to repair okay. it. And then we guarantee that for another year. Okay, so it not only replaces the device, but then gives you a, a year guarantee. Thank you. And I guess in a way that sort of pays for itself because we're not having to pay for visits. To I see my father-in-law struggles with this all the time, having to constantly go to the hearing aid office, you know, to the sales point to have them adjusted or, you know, the Bluetooth with his cell phone doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's probably um, to round out the questions for the hour. Um, we do have a lot of folks who work on the phone. Um, what's the experience that you're hearing um, using this device, like while also using like a handset? So th that's actually an interesting question because our devices, most hearing aids, don't work very well uh, with phones, okay? The beauty with Eargo's hearing aids, because of how deeply they fit in the ear, you can hold a cell phone up and maybe just have to angle it slightly away from your ear and you'll get great reception. The hearing aid will amplify what's coming out of the phone. But if you have a traditional headset that you're putting you know, a band around and putting earphones over, because of, again, the, the depth of where the Eargo devices fit in the ear, you should be able to talk through a headset with very little problems. And if you do encounter issues with that, what the solution would be if you get some feedback or whistling is ask for an appointment with one of our hearing care specialists or our licensed hearing specialists, and they will go in and remotely program the device and set up a specific program for your work setting. We can, we can really get flexible and- Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's, it's super cool. That's awesome. So uh, Steve, thank you so much for this time today. 
Um, and thank you to everyone um, who was able to sign in and join. Um, I will send out a post attendee information with the contact information for Stephen for Ergo um, to get you connected with something if you're interested. Um, and please uh, join us in a couple weeks um, where we hear from our official charity, the FIA, the Federal Employee Education and Assistance Fund. Um, they're coming over to talk to us a little bit about some other benefits for all of you. Um, Steve, thank you so much. You're very welcome, Chad. Thanks for having me. And thank you for everybody that uh, joined in and uh, participated. It was a pleasure uh, doing this and hope that you found it helpful. Take care. Bye-bye.